Good afternoon, Chairman Gosar and esteemed members of Congress. It is an honor to speak with you all today in our nation's capital. And I'm grateful for the opportunity to speak on a subject we're all very passionate about. I was a game warden in California for 28 years, part of our nationwide thin green line of conservation officers protecting our country's wildlife, waterways, and wild lands. I'm also the author of the book, Hidmore, that goes into greater detail on today's topic. The cartels from Mexico, along with other worldwide transnational criminal organizations, what we call TCOs, have become the biggest domestic public safety threat and some of the greatest destroyers of our natural resources throughout America. Our first violent encounter with the cartels was during an allied agency raid on an illegal trespass cannabis grow on public land in the Silicon Valley foothills where I was born and raised. When ambushed by cartel gunmen, my young warden partner was near fatally shot through both legs by an AK-47. This was also the first time we'd see and learn of the highly toxic EPA-banned insecticide and rodenticide poisons, nerve agents and anticoagulants with trade names like carbofuran, furidan, and metaphos being smuggled into the U.S. through our southern border by cartel operatives, along with the massive amounts of water stealing and water pollution. The anti-personnel traps like Vietnam-era punji pits throughout some of these clandestine grow sites and the killing of numerous wildlife and aquatic species. These public land grow sites can be as remote as 10 miles in the backcountry of a national forest wilderness area or as close as a few hundred yards from a children's outdoor science camp and Silicon Valley hillside homes. After four more officer-involved shootings and other violent encounters during anti-cartel grow operations, I was honored to co-develop and lead the Marijuana Enforcement Team, the MET, in 2013, a specialized tactical unit of game wardens dedicated to fighting this problem statewide. MET's first six years of operations paints a very ominous picture of public land, wild land, illegal grow operations. Through 800 missions, our team eradicated 3 million cannabis plants, most all of those plants toxically tainted with EPA-banned chemicals, destroyed 29 tons of processed cannabis for sale on the black market nationwide, and made 973 felony arrests on growers, many classified as deportable felons with extensive criminal histories. On the environmental damage front, our team removed 450 tons of gross site waste, 455 miles of water diverting pipe, 756 gallons of illegal and toxic chemicals, and dismantled and restored waterways being diverted by 793 dams accounting for millions of gallons of water being stolen from our pristine wildlands. Fast forward to today, as we are seeing more black market cannabis operations on not only uh, public land, but on rural private land tracks as well, causing just as much, if not more, egregious water depletion and environmental destruction throughout California and other states. These operations are being run not only by the Mexican cartels, but now dominated by the Chinese and Hmong organized crime groups. These Asian TCOs are now smuggling in their own highly toxic grow site poisons, and because of these grow operations, rural communities are now experiencing human trafficking, animal cruelty, and intimidation, while being run out of their hometowns by cartel growers, as we witnessed in California's remote Siskiyou County, as just one example. As polycriminals, the cartels are involved in more crimes than just illegal cannabis. These groups are also running the fentanyl and methamphetamine production that's killing hundreds of thousands of Americans annually, in addition to multi-billion dollar human and child sex trafficking operations throughout our great nation. Given everything we have seen while combating these criminal groups, stopping them from operating within America to poison our citizens, prey upon our children, and destroy our wild land resources must be a top priority. Thank you and happy to answer any questions you may have. Lieutenant Norris, in talking with, in, in talking with you and seeing some of the, your pictures and stuff like that, can you elaborate on the environmental consequences of illegal immigration in the, from the marijuana operations on the public lands? Yes, happy to, Chairman. Uh, the environmental impacts are, they're exponential. Uh, obviously, when we have these illegal growers in the, in the forest to set up, say, a public land grow, Trees are going to be removed, grasses, habitat, creeks are going to be impacted by putting water diversions in and blocking water that feeds not only wildlife but leads to city water supplies at the bottom of canyons. Um, also, when we talked about the EPA banned poisons that I mentioned in my intro, uh, these are so toxic that a couple tablespoons of carbofuran poured into a creek, a small creek, could destroy that creek for miles. No exaggeration, and kill every living aquatic within it for that 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 span of distance. So. What's the aftermath of that? Animals are gonna die, there's potential water pollution sources for small towns and even large cities. 
On the private land front, even though we're not in the remote wilderness anymore in those pristine areas, we're still in a rural tract where we have creeks. We also have the underground water supply, the water table, being impacted underground. Mm -hmm. A lot of these illegal growers now throughout Northern California are bringing in illegal well drilling operators, uh, equipment, and they're going underground and taking millions and millions of gallons of water for say 10,000 grows as an approximation in Siskiyou County and deleting, depleting the water supply so severely that ranchers that have lived in Siskiyou County for 100 years, farmers and community members in a small rural quote unquote American town that was safe are losing their water and having to leave town and move out of the area because of this, this infiltration. So it's an exponential compilation of environmental crimes that just continue besides just dead animals inside a grow site. And over the last three years, have you seen an increase in that degradation and the, the wantonness? I mean, we have cashless bail, we have all sorts of different things, and particularly with the uh, cartels, they're becoming very, very emboldened. Do you see a difference in the application towards public lands and to the uh, environment? We see a slight a, a decrease in public lands from what I'm told by the agencies I've wor I worked for previously uh, over the last couple of years, but they still are on public lands. Obviously, national forests, national parks, as our Forest Service and National Park representatives testified to earlier. But the influx on private land with as much, if not more, environmental damage is definitely increasing exponentially. And not only in California, the, the Asian uh, TCO cartel groups that I mentioned are in Maine, they're in Oklahoma, they're in Oregon, as well as, as, well as California, and possibly some other states. Um, the type of chemicals we're seeing right now that are coming in that are not from the Mexican cartels coming across our border, the carbofuran, but these new Chinese chemicals with labels on them coming back, going back to that country in these grow sites throughout all of California, not just Northern California and other states where they are run by Chinese organized crime groups primarily um, and not necessarily the Sinaloa cartel like historically in Mexico. So now we've got two different cartels working environmental crimes throughout the nation because they can get here and they can operate with impunity the way our, our current structures are from cannabis regulation and also what's happening on the border and the ease of entry. They're, it's almost like they're in sync, right? I'm sorry, Congressman. It's like they're in sync. They're coordinating. Uh, they very much are. And you brought up a good point with that, that coordination. Uh, my DEA colleagues have just exposed the fact that the Sinaloa cartel and the Asian trans, transnational criminal organizations are now working together uh, in certain crimes. China is providing all the precursor chemicals for fentanyl production and methamphetamine that the cartels out of Mexico primarily run. And now we're seeing the private land, especially illegal growth sites going on in private land with these new chemicals being run predominantly, predominantly by the Chinese and Asian cartels gotcha. in a switch. Both are operating uh, like this on our side of the border. How do you respond to Americans who are not living near unregulated private or public land grow operations and do not see the direct cartel threats and why should this be a priority issue? Thank you, Congressman, especially for your interest in it. And I agree, we aptly named the, the, the new book Hidden War because so many people don't know the depth throughout America of what these cartels are doing. And what we've seen at this point is not everybody is a cannabis user in America. Not everybody lives next to an illegal grow site, even a rural private land grow site, or maybe deep into the national forest. But what we need to remember is this cannabis that's coming from these transnational criminal organizations, these cartels, has these EPA banned poisons on it, and they're not washing that stuff off. They're not worried about health and human safety. So these criminal groups, that marijuana is going out to the masses on a black market in almost every state in the union. Even though they're not, you know, those people may not live next to that growth site, they could possibly be affected by consuming an inorganic, unregulated cannabis product. The other thing we need to remember is with the human trafficking, the fentanyl crisis, and methamphetamine, like we've talked about throughout the day with various witnesses, um, that affects everybody. That's in all 50 states. And while illegal cannabis may not be grown in all 50 states by the cartels, that other stuff is happening. So this is a 
domestic problem that I think we need to handle as a complete priority and look at the cartels as polycriminals as they're defined and not just cannabis or human trafficking or fentanyl or gun running, but really the biggest domestic threat I believe we have in America that needs to be handled like anything we would consider a national security issue, harming right, our people. I appreciate your, your work on that on the West <clears throat> Coast. Uh, why the recent shift? Yes, thank you, Congressman. Um, the shifts largely come from our regulation structure in California under Proposition 64. Um, that's, that regulation structure for regulated cannabis for recreational use has been in place since 2016, and we're on our seventh or eighth year of it. And because under Prop 64, we lowered the penalty for outdoor trespass growing or even private land growing illegally by these cartels, we lowered it from a felony to a misdemeanor. And for a juvenile offender, an infraction, which basically put very little deterrent bite in growing illegal cannabis anywhere on our private or public lands. So now the cartels are basically going to private lands where they don't have to go as far into the woods, if you will, in the back country, and just putting thousands and thousands of grows, like in Siskiyou County that we referenced that Congressman Lamoth also mentioned in, in his question previously. And at this point now, we have a lot of enforcement action out that my previous agency is working hard through their cannabis enforcement program to stop, as well as other agencies. But it's a matter of numbers and plain whack-a-mole. We're just outnumbered and really out-resourced from the standpoint of these private land grows because of an incentivized black market through the new law. Right. A statement of appreciation for taking the time to address this issue, for bringing it to the light, taking the hidden war and exposing it into the light that we're facing throughout America. And I would just ask each and every one of you to take what we've uh, discussed today, and I know everybody is, and make it a national priority. Let's educate and make this not a hidden war. Let's make this a common knowledge to the American public. Let's look at it as a national security issue. Let's look at drug abuse and, and uh, basically the demand for some of these drugs and some of, the, uh, and some of the commodities that the cartels are making, not millions, but billions of dollars off of us Americans while using our country basically as a stomping ground to run their criminal enterprises at the demise of, our, of the American public. And I just thank everybody listening today that we can do something with that moving forward and hope we can. Thank you.